Mr. Schofield. You were dead to the world. Well, I was murdered in 2004. So. <laughs> Right, listen, mate, um, there's no time to waste. As head of soap surveillance, um, I need you to bring me up to speed in a minute. You want me to explain a year's worth of soap stories in 60 seconds? Yeah, you've got 55 now. <laughs> I'll stick to the highlights. Let's see. Well, things got steamy in the street when Ronnie seduced Jenny with his legendary silver tongue. In the light, you shouldn't be elbow deep in any lamb chunks. Yeah, if I've heard that line once. On the subject of romance, how did Liam and Layla's big day go in Emmerdale? Oh, it was a nightmare. Bernice is still in love with Liam. And to make matters worse, Liam glued his hand to his face. So I appear to have given Bernice the wrong impression. Yeah, and that's nasty. And they weren't the only ones celebrating wedding bells. There was big news for the doctors. Valerie's getting hitched. Valerie? I'm getting married to myself. Well, at least she knows the in-laws. What was that mean in Hollyoaks, then? Did they follow the lockdown rules? Oh, yeah. I mean, Summer is surprisingly strict about visitors using hand sanitizer. She needs to work on her aim. What about the East Enders behaving themselves? Oh, absolutely. Although Phil did get arrested. You are under arrest for a fray. Yeah, well, there's always one bad apple. <laughs> What's this clip here? No, don't touch that! Don't touch that. No, no, no! No! Here I am. Meter's running. Give me your worst. The bitch is back. So we might have been away for a while, but the soap was is back and it's been better than ever. It's been two years, isn't it? Three years. Three years. Three years. Can't count. I'm here and it, and it feels great, so, you know, oh. Very excited. So it's nice to be here. It's great to see everyone out all together as well. Oh, my goodness me. It's, just, it's so lovely to get dressed up. Awards, oh, back with the we do have somebody up for something <laughs> here, though, we're so fingers crossed. <laughs> we are absolutely thrilled to be back. It's been a long time. Come on, East Enders! East Enders, yes! Yeah. Come, Come on, Curry! Go, oh, yeah. Team Hollyoaks! Yes! Team Doctors! Come on, Emmerdale! Here we go for the Soap Awards 2022! Drop the gas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Philip Schofield. British Soap Awards live from London's stunning Hackney Empire. We are back! <laughs> For the first time since 2019, our favourite soap stars are all here together and they look magnificent. <laughs> Let's hear it for Coronation Street! <laughs> Doctors! EastEnders! Congratulations on their 50th birthday, Emmerdale! And finally, let's raise the roof for Hollyoaks! Delighted to have them with us after a truly memorable year, but it hasn't always been easy since the last Soap Awards. Our favourite shows have faced and overcome their greatest challenges ever. In the midst of the pandemic, they fought to make it back onto our screens to provide the entertainment we so badly needed. And for that, we thank them all. <laughs> we 
The stars and creators of Britain's soaps have once again led the way in great, gripping, groundbreaking television. And tonight, we celebrate another 12 months of sensational homegrown drama. You don't speak. You don't say anything. You deny, deny, deny. Mom, look at me. Please leave me alone. No, I pushed him under that train. We had a nice chat. What he made me do... It's not against the law, is it? You want the truth? Then you better sit down. Idiot. A toast to dear departed Norris. We will miss you. He was a very old fashioned man. He loved old fashioned things. And I shall miss him. Give me a word, please. It's time for our boy to thank his way. Do you know when you're coming back? You no. Know. Whatever tomorrow brings, we'll be okay. I feel it. Surge of pride. Thanks, Mayfair. Thought you'd be proud. I hope so. If we give it a really good shot, I can be really so happy. I love you, Felix Westwood. I never want to lose you again. I just want it to be me and you forever. It's been an incredible year in soap, and tonight we have 14 awards, some voted for by a panel of TV journalists, drama producers, and industry professionals, and some chosen by the real soap experts, you. So let's kick things off with the first award of the night, and we are hitting the ground running with Best Storyline. To present it are two people who face some fierce competition themselves tomorrow night when they take to the pitch for soccer aid. One is an England goalkeeping legend, the other is a Dragon's Den star who was recently name-checked on Coronation Street when Shona Platt described him as an old soul with the body of a young god. <laughs> I know how he feels. <laughs> Please welcome David James and Stephen Bartlett. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Over the past year, our soaps have produced brilliant, powerful storylines tackling a huge range of difficult subjects. They include historic sex abuse, violent hate crime and bipolar disorder. And as always, the nominees have given the hard-hitting, informative dramas whilst also remaining sensitive to the issues at the heart of all of their stories. Here are the nominations for Best Storyline. Hollyoaks. Misbah's historic rape. I just had a very pleasing afternoon with our son. 
He's turned out pretty well, despite it all. I learned so much from him. <gasps> all I wanted was to look him in the eye and tell him how much he's hurt me. He raped me. But you haven't defined me. Coronation Street. Hate crime. Why are you still not dressing like you used to do? Because that started it. Gave them an excuse to insult us, attack us, kill Seb. So they win? Guilty. It's not a game. No one wins. Doctors, Bear and his mother encounter racism at St Phil's Hospital. Don't raise your voice at me. I am not raising my voice. I am trying to make myself heard. You people are all the same. I ain't got time. She she had some tests. Makeda didn't have the sigmoidoscopy. Are you saying if she'd had the procedure, this all could have been avoided? She's the one. You saw a black woman and refused to give her the time or respect she deserved. All right, now don't pull that one on me. EastEnders, jeans bipolar. It ain't safe for you to be around the kids. You're not. You're not. You're not well, you need help, you need to see a doctor, and until you do, then you ain't seeing them kids. Dean Slater. She's really? having an episode. You know, erratic behaviour. I'm keeping my mood diary and I'm taking my tablets exactly as I meant to. There is nothing wrong with me. She's gone missing, she's she's manic and she's not safe. Apparently she's getting married. Do you know where I am? Oh. Okay. Emmerdale. Mina, serial killer. There was quite a gap between the Dean and Leanna. After Leanna, there was Andrea. <laughs> How about Ben? You're making this all about you, and it's not cute. Ow! <laughs> I've been... misinterpreted. And the award goes to... <laughs> Mishpa's historic <laughs> rape. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, this means a lot to us. It's a very serious subject. And we know a lot of the victims don't get legal justice. But I hope we can show that by accepting and healing yourself, maybe you can move forward. So. <laughs> You can catch Dave and Stephen on ITV tomorrow night from 6.30pm, live at Soccer Aid. Coming up, we've got the award for Best Young Performer and Best On-Screen Partnership, and... <laughs> <laughs> Neighbours might be good friends, but it's time to say goodbye. We bid farewell to Australia's greatest export. Don't go away. where the competition is fierce. Much like that sinkhole in Corrie, it is wide open. Over the years, our soaps have given us some incredible double acts. Corrie's Jack and Vera, Emmerdale's Val and Diane, EastEnders, Ethel and her little Willie. The list goes on. And our next award celebrates that magical chemistry. It's best on-screen partnership. Here to tell us who's got this one all sewn up are a popular pair who really are the perfect fit from the great British sewing bee. It's Esme Young and Patrick Grant. Good evening, 
everybody. Hello. Thank you for having Hello. us. So, the nominations for Best On Screen Partnership are. Chris Walker and Jan Pearson, <laughs> Doctors. <laughs> Isabel Steele and Bradley Johnson, <laughs> Emma Dale. Anna Passy and Kieran Richardson. Hollyoaks. Lacey Turner and Gillian Wright. <laughs> David Nielsen and Molly Gallagher. Coronation Street. I thought you can't hold your bladder. It's your fault. I've just exposed myself to a stranger. What were you doing? <laughs> What's so funny? Your face when you were coming out of oh, those bushes. shut up. That, that'll be the highlight of that guy's week. Shut up. Hope you had your best knickers on. Oh, will you shut <laughs> up? What? <laughs> what would have been your song? Um, Hawkey Corky. Nice. And you? Macarena. When I dance, they call me Macarena, and the boys they say, "Cause they win now." Ridiculous, you know that. And you are pure class, Mrs. Dingle. Oh, is it, um, Mrs. Flaherty Dingle? No, it sounds so much like Farty Dingle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put stolen drugs in a van with your kids. Say it now, Dusty. You can't put stolen drugs. Shh. They're not in here. They haven't been in here since forever. They're with Liberty. Although Sophie and Sebastian do love these guys, and I have to agree, they have to come alive get any more bizarre. Can somebody help me, please? She's walking around. We've got dog teddies in a pram talking to her. You did it to hurt me. You know everything the folks around you. Why, Mum? Why would you do that? You've probably scarred him for life and for work. Playing helping stage. Bringing him in here is disgusting. It's, it's cruel. It's, it's, it's completely tapped, you stupid cow. Oh, your true colours are coming out now. Oh, is any wonder I'm the way I am? for your failing, Stacey. You could have had it all if you weren't such a self-centred bitch. Please don't give this to me, Roy. You're, you're the one person in the whole world that I trust and I love you. I'm sorry. You promised me things. You promised me you'd always look after me. Roy! And the award goes to Lacey Turner and Tillian Wright for Congratulations, who wants to take it? This is the best award to get. Um, I love working with this lady. Uh, <laughs> she is the most... Um, talented and uh, generous and instinctive and truthful actor I know. She brings a lot of joy and happiness to the set and everybody loves her and what is there not to love? It is an absolute privilege to work with you, Lacey Turner, and I never take it for granted. Thank you. I love her. Um, <laughs> I'm really not prepared and I'm terrible at speeches, as you know. Um, 
But Jill, I just wanted to say thank you. I have watched you work for the last 15 years and it is such an honor to watch you work. The detail, the, the amount of effort you, that you put into Jean is, is, is mesmerizing and you make me better. You make me a better actress, so thank you. And I love you very much. <laughs> And it's time for our next award, recognising those incredibly talented folk whose careers are only just beginning. Best young performer. Here to present it are two young stars who always earn top marks for their roles on the hit CBBC show, Mallory Towers. It's the brilliant Dania Griever and Ella Bright. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for having us and congratulations to all of you. So the nominations for Best Young Performer are Sunny Kendall from <laughs> EastEnders. <laughs> Millie Gibson, Coronation <laughs> Street. from Emmerdale <laughs> and Jaden Fox from Hollyoaks <laughs> I saw him bleeding and I got scared you saw him bleeding how did that happen I pushed him in my bag to get him away and then I saw buds on him I was scared he'd hurt me more if I hurt him, so I ran away. But you did have a knife in your bag? It was an accident, I missed. So it's my fault then, is it? Yeah. So. You know, this is so typical you, typical Laura playing a typical violin when you don't care about anyone but yourself. That's not true. Yes, it is! She's the most selfish person I know, and I'm sick and tired of running around after you, trying to be the best daughter ever, when really, you don't deserve me. But listen, you heard what the doctor said. He's OK. But no one really knows what's going to happen, do they? You keep pretending you do, but you don't, do you? No, sorry. I wish I did. Dad could still die. When did you get so good at chess? I've been practicing mm. more since Silver died. Our oh, things are so much better now that he's gone, aren't they? You don't really mean that. Oh, no, I do. Now that he's gone, it's my turn to look after you. And the winner is... Millie Gibson! You look so to be given the most hard-hitting and compelling storylines, and I'm forever honoured for that. Um, the Sophie Lancaster hate crime story, um, was oh, it will stay in my heart forever. It had a beautiful script written by Ian Kershaw and beautiful actors involved. Um, Molly Gallagher, um, Max Evans, Tanisha Gorey, David Nielsen, Sally Carmen, and the list goes on, because honestly, the amount of talent a part of that storyline was just immeasurable. But um, I'd just like to thank my mum and uh, my dad, and my brothers, and my nana. Um, and yeah, um, thank you so, so much. And my cousin, and my cousin. Well done.
2022 is a bittersweet year in soap, as well as the huge success stories. It will also see the end of a TV classic. Yesterday, filming wrapped on the last ever episode of Neighbours. Since 1985, it's given us iconic moments, introduced the Poms to life down under and discovered some major stars. So we couldn't let the most famous street in the Southern Hemisphere go without one last trip down memory lane. British Soap Awards, good day from down under. For 37 years, despite being on the other side of the world from one another, you, soap fans in the UK, <laughs> have very much been a part of our special community here in Erinsborough. Neighbours has meant the world to me. For 28 years, I've come here every day to do the thing that I love with people who have become family. And I hope along the way, we've become part of your family too. What's the name of the street? Ramsey Street. Ramsey Street. Neighbours. Charlene! This is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. I believe the best man lives here. Helps to make a better day. Oh, Say hello, Dad. Hello, Dad. Scott, are you all right? Where have you been? So you've got yourself a job. Oh, great. Fantastic. I can start right now, if you like. It's a terrible line, but I haven't seen you here before. That is a terrible line. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, no, no. tonight you're in for a special treat because we have the one, the only, Afro Harold. No, I don't think so. Oh. 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 What is going on? Sarah, get down from there. No matter how long the journey, the path we tread is worth every footstep. If we're lucky, we find all sorts of love along the way. Love we share with partners, family, friends, neighbours. Ah, uh, welcome, my neighbour, to another. Thank you. It's been a memorable ride. Big thanks to everyone on Ramsey Street for 37 glorious soap years. You will be missed. Time for a quick break, but when we come back, expect fireworks with the awards for best single episode and best dramatic performance. Don't go away. Soap Awards Live, where it's time for another heavyweight contest. The award for best single episode, recognising TV gold from start to finish. The panel was so impressed by the strength of this category that they really struggled to pick a single winner. But they've done it. And so here to tell us more is someone who's always great value. And you can take that to the bank from The Money Show. It's the brilliant Martin Lewis. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely to present this award. Soaps have such power to really educate and a platform to educate on an issue. It's really important, some of the work that goes through. So let me go through to the nominations now for the best single episode. 
Flashback, Coronation Street. <laughs> Out of Time, Hollyoaks. <laughs> Three consultations and a funeral. Doctors. <laughs> Marlon Stroke, Emmerdale. And Jean in South End, East Enders. Can you remember where you were when Corey was kicking Seb? Please stop it! Stop it! Please stop it! 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 Corey, stop it! I'll just have to make sure that I don't leave any open goals for them. I imagine you'll be a little apprehensive talking to the police. Having to give new evidence, we we'll relive it all over again. <laughs> we are not going to die. <laughs> I bet you wish you said just to marry me now. It is me that is indebted to you for it. Go in there. I need your help to get us out of here. I need you to be the bravest that you've ever been. Oh, is Daddy in there? I don't know. I didn't see him. No one should have control over you. You can't sit there and make these kinds of accusations about my husband. Mark's... Mark's dead, isn't it? Even... If I tell the truth about Mark, about what he did to me and what he made me do, it's not against the law, is it? Yes. It's called coercive control. You've got to live your life, Marlon, as if it's your last day. Will you, you marry me? Jinx. Yeah. yeah. Don't Don't it. <laughs> your ring, I've forgotten your ring, it's back at the house. It's OK, you can wait. It's like you've had a stroke. I'm more than all right. I'm wonderful. I'm getting married today. Which way's the chapel? I know I'm ill, but I've got important things to do, Stacey. Come on, Mum, take my hand. I've got to go now. And the winner is... Three consultations and a funeral. Doctors, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank, obviously, Dido and uh, Lucy Benjamin, who can't be with us tonight. <laughs> Amazing producer, Grania, Grania O'Boyle, writer, Philip Ralph, and uh, Mike Hobson and Peter Lloyd. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with an awful lot of you in this room in my long and checkered career. And uh, um, there's a lot of people here who aren't, tonight, aren't here tonight who I'd also like to thank. And they're the people without whom we couldn't be here. They're the, the runners and the security guards. <laughs> and the cleaners and the standby art directors. Everybody. And of course, the audience. But this is, this is the ultimate 
endurance challenge. This is the ultimate team sport. I love you too, Mum. Uh, this is the ultimate team sport. Um, and no one person, no one person is bigger than all of these amazing shows. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Dan Wilson, our director. Well, I can tell you that the panel were absolutely blown away by that winning episode. They agreed that had it been on at 9pm as a standalone special, it could have won a BAFTA. And the drama continues now with more sensational scene-stealing moments because it's the award for best dramatic performance. Here to present it are a couple who know a thing or two about dramatic performances themselves. Look who's waltzed in. It's Jeanette and Ali Ash. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Philip. Oh, well, hello. I was really hoping for a little waltz to get to the podium, but this dress only allows a walk, though, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Speaking of drama, the nominations for Best Dramatic Performance are Mark Sharnick, Emmerdale. <laughs> Sally Carmen, Coronation Street. Harvey Verdi, Holly Oaks. Bex Lee, Doctors. And Gillian Wright, EastEnders. Used to, used to come out with some funny things. I wish I could remember them all. Or even after. I took drugs to drown blood out an unhappy childhood. But all I did was blood out yours. Did he know? Did he? I didn't want to have sex with him. Did he know? It's true, isn't it? <gasps> Ali raped me. Mum? Yeah, yeah, evidence. Uh, Warwick, Warwick Lane, 25. My mum, she's, um, she's, she's, um, uh, uh, unconscious. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Just please get here. I am not embarrassed about my mental illness. I have bipolar, and I have been living with it for years. I have had a lifetime of dealing with people like you. Little men who make themselves feel big by laughing at my expense. I expect you think that I should be on the funny farm, too. Well, go ahead. Make fun of me. Get it off your chest. Come on. Bring it on, because I have never felt stronger. And the winner is... Mark Shawnick and the day. Uh, 
I'm going to get so drunk. Uh, uh, I'm, I, it's, I'm, you know, it's lucky I'm not cool because uh, it, uh, it means you don't have to be cool because I'm just... Uh, every, you see people get these awards. Oh, it's in my mum's downstairs toilet. It's, you know, it's in the attic. I'm going to wear this <laughs> day in, day out. It's, uh, it's, it's a medallion. It's a hat pin. It's a fetching brooch. It's all of those things. But um, I should thank, um, very quickly, uh, the, the producers for trusting me with this story. Jane and Kate and Laura and Tony and Sophie and all, all those. I'm going to forget so many people, and I'm sorry in advance. The amazing crews, the writers and directors, the cast, who are just, have had their arms around me for the whole story and been so supportive, and especially Amelia and Louise and Zoe and Dominic. Uh, and I, I also should thank, quickly, the amazing... I'm so sorry I've forgotten anybody. I should thank the Stroke Association who put me in touch with clinicians. And most importantly, two survivors, Chris King and Nick Hounsfield. I will always be in your debts, lads, and you know why. There are... There's a stroke every five minutes in the UK. That's a, over 100,000 a year. There are 1.3 million stroke survivors in this country. Uh, it's the leading cause of adult disability in this country. And not enough is being done given those numbers. There's not enough funding for research. More needs to be done. I'm going to find the best way of wearing this now, but I'm thrilled to bits. Thank you so much. Thank you. Time for a quick break, but coming up, the award for outstanding achievement. Don't go away. <laughs> Show Awards, we've got lots more on the way tonight. And like Valerie Pittman's least favourite patient, you never know what it'll throw up next. On now to the award that celebrates those who've touched down in Soapland for the very first time this year. It's best newcomer. To present it are two people who've been catapulted into the spotlight themselves recently. Please welcome Apprentice winner Harpre Corps and Master Chef champion Eddie Scott. We're so excited to present the um, award for the best newcomer tonight. I hope everyone's having a wonderful evening. And if you were wondering if I was responsible for the canapes, it's not me. Blame Harpreet. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's announce the nominees. Matthew James Bailey from Hollyoaks. We have Darcy Gray from Emmerdale. Paddy Beaver from Coronation Street. Ross McLaren from Doctors. Ross, Ross Boatman from EastEnders. Which is why I need to do this. No, Maya, 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 don't, Maya, don't! I like Ethan. We click. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to miss out on the chance to get to know him better because I'm not the problem here. Please. All I'm asking is that you. I've already had to hide who I was once before, and I'm not doing that again. I know this is hard, but we have to take this to the police and show them. But we can't protect them, all right? E even if they're your friend. I'm so sorry. Ray! Animals! You're all animals! Ow, ow, ow! Why are you worried that you're going to catch something? How would you look? It's antiretroviral therapy. So it helps to keep my viral load so low that it's undetectable. 
Always good, lad. Dad. Oh, no. Stop you running around having fun and making plans. It's been all alone. To wife. Boy, 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 don't we show <laughs> And the winner is... Ross Bootman from EastEnders. Thanks for that. Thanks for this. That's newcomer. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for 40 years. Uh, I love my job. I love the people. I love coming into work. Uh, I've had the best year. Uh, I've been I had the good fortune to work on some really important, powerfully written stories and work with some fantastic actors along the way. Um, I just really want to thank everybody from every department. Uh, for making my job possible and making it such a joy. Uh, I feel extremely grateful and privileged. Thank you. Next tonight, it's the award for Villain of the Year. And over the, <laughs> over the past 12 months, the baddies have been badder than ever before. We've seen theft, blackmail, even someone beaten to death with an oar. It's one of the few occasions when you prefer to be up a creek without a paddle. Here to unmask the wicked winner are two people who've seen their own fair share of foul play and dodgy dealings. Just don't tell that to AC12. From the phenomenal line of duty, it's Tommy Jessup and Gregory Piper. Thank you. The nominations for Villain of the Year are Maximus Evans, Coronation Street. Um, Cade Sandu, Emmett Jones. <laughs> Laura White, Doctors. Um, Toby Alexander Smith. <laughs> He's Andrews. And Rhiannon Clements. Hollyoaks. <laughs> won't say anything, so you say nothing too. Do you understand? You deny, deny, deny. But what if he says but what? Oh, but what? But what? what if he says something? We won't. We'll be too scared. Look at your faces. Please, mean it. Oh! <laughs> Are you about to appeal to my good side? Yeah, good luck with that. The medicine I'm going to prescribe has been used by an awful lot of people, usually with no serious side effects. How do you know? Because drugs are carefully monitored. She was acting out, so I gave her a push. It was a tiny little push, and she fell on the knife. This little piggy went to market, and this little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef, and this little piggy had none. Maximus and Wow. Now, thank
Thank you. Thank you all very much. I say this is um, unexpected as is an uh, overstatement, but everyone at Corrie, thank you so much. Uh, Ian, <laughs> this opportunity has meant the world to me. Uh, I love all of the directors, the writers, um, and obviously the cast. I miss you all so much, uh, so much. Millie, Tanisha, Sally, uh, Jim, and David. Um, you guys are brilliant, but this is to my mum. For all you do, you're amazing. Um, but more importantly, this is to my biggest fan uh, who can't be here tonight, but it's my nana. I know she's looking down and she'd love this. It's for the boys as well. Thank you. It's time for a moment of very special recognition now as we honour somebody who's not just a soap icon, but an all-time TV great. It's the Award for Outstanding Achievement. Here to present it is someone who's made a huge contribution to the world of soap herself, as Angie Watts, the original Queen Vic landlady. Her time in Albert Square saw drink-fueled rows, illicit affairs and record Christmas viewing figures, thanks to those divorce papers. Please welcome the amazing Anita Dobson. <laughs> I hope you're having a wonderful time. It is a very great pleasure for me to be here this evening because I'm proud that I've been asked to present the award for outstanding achievement in a soap. Now, the recipient of this award I have known for a very long time. I first met her when she was 16 years old. I was just about to rehearse my very first scene in the soap. So naturally, I was a wee bit nervous, but I needn't have worried because there was a little tap on my shoulder and then a cheeky little face went, yeah, Mum, I made your cup of tea. <laughs> so I knew everything was going to be OK. Now, facts. She's been in over 2,000 episodes. <laughs> She's had... 237 duff duffs. Yeah. yeah! And we all love a duff duff, don't we? Yeah. And she's also been landlady of the Queen Vic six times. Yeah. Amazing storylines. The death of her son, Denny. The re yeah. The return from the grave of her father. Dirty Den. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> and then the revelation of her affair with Phil Mitchell. <laughs> which brought in 23.5 million viewers. <laughs> yeah. Not bad, eh? She's quirky, funny, talented, Glorious, glamorous, and iconic. And she is the winner of this year's award for outstanding achievement. I made such a mess in my life. Sort of messed up then. Where would I start? Okay, if there was one phrase that I could say to sum her up, it would be this To know her is to love her. And Sharon Watts. Shouldn't you be on a lead? Shouldn't you have a muzzle? I've got eyes in me head, you know. Mm. And a nose in every corner. You just know that if you've got a day with Tish on set, you're going to have a giggle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Letitia Dean is very naughty. She's lots of fun. She makes the day go quicker. She's got a terrible twinkle in her eye. My first memories are when we had our auditions for EastEnders, 1984. Mum will like it. Yeah, of course she will. What do you think, Michelle? Oh, it's lovely. I think the fact that Tish has been here since the very beginning in this pub, she just runs through it like a kind of steel core. You could definitely say she's Dan Angie's daughter. 
<laughs> She's Trump. Sharon Gay, don't underestimate just how many millions of people tuned in. I'll never forget that moment that it came out. Everybody was at home. Let's see what it was. In one minute, I was looking at him, in the next, ripping each other's clothes off. I mean, never go for brothers. Never go for brothers, Sharon. What were you thinking? Grump, please. And I always remember I had to slap her. And she said, oh, just go for it, Jilly. So I did. Kathy, nothing happened. Oh, you slut. With a red mark on her face and went, oh, I didn't mean that much. <laughs> Hello, Phil. What can I get you? Landlady of the Vic, six times. Who's done it more than that? She puts her face on, she steps out behind that bar, and she is that landlady. I mean, those sorts of scenes when Denny died and, and the grief and that she showed. I will never, ever love anyone like I love you. You have to dig deep for that, and it really does take its toll on you as an actress. Oh, my baby! My baby! One minute you see Sharon, she, she looks very vulnerable and hurt, and the next minute she becomes this powerhouse of a woman, and she makes it look easy. That is testament to what she can do as an actress. That's another thing we haven't even talked about, is Tish Dean's legs. I mean, she gives Tina Turner a run for her money with him. I mean, she never has a problem getting a guy, Sharon Watts. She's a lady. My personal favourite was Shianu. Sharon Keanu. Shianu. <laughs> Let's just say I think Tishy loves these storylines. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, of course. Hang on. Denny's dad, Dennis. Is he a stepbrother? What was he? They weren't blood. He was Den's son, wasn't he? But she was his adopted daughter. Well, still messy. Thank you. And good night. Hello, Princess. My dearest Tish, I've watched you over the years turn Sharon from a young girl into the icon that she is now, and it's been just so amazingly brilliant to watch. If anyone deserves this award, it's you. I hope you know and realise how special you are. It's kind of overdue, but it's right on time. Congratulations, my darling. Letitia Dean. Hello, guys. Oh, Hello. Oh. oh, you look so <laughs> sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I love you. Thank you so much. It's really overwhelming. Um, you stay with me, Mummy. I'll see you for a while. <laughs> really overwhelming. I'm so touched. I love my job. I love my cast, my crew. Love our fans. <laughs> I love my mum. But seriously, it's been over, what, 30 odd years now since I started then. I got cast for my dirty laugh, if you remember. I do. And hopefully, I'm still carrying that on. But um, I love you all so much, my lovely cast members as well, and all the crew. You all know who you are. And I lost my daddy a week ago, so this is for my daddy. I hope he's proud. <laughs> and for my darling mummy, and I hope you enjoy your fish and chip. But seriously, thank you, guys. I'm not very good at all this public speaking, but I do love you all, and thank you so much for the way you love me and look after me. So, thank you. <laughs> They're still hugging over here, look, in the corner. Still hugging, still hugging. Still hugging, still hugging. <laughs> Love that. Time for a quick break, but coming up, we've got a brand new award. It's all relative as we reveal this year's Best Soap Family. Don't go away. Welcome back.
back to the British Soap Awards. We've already seen some big winners tonight, but there are plenty more on the way. And up next is something brand new for this year. The Award for Best Family, voted for by you. There's no shortage of brilliant broods in Soapland. Some are happy households, others range from the dysfunctional to the downright disastrous, but we love them like our own. And here to present the award are a husband and wife who've let us take a peek inside their own hectic home life in the family diaries. Please welcome Greg and Billy Shepherd. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. The nominations for Best Family are... The McQueen's Holly Oaks. <laughs> the Carters EastEnders. <laughs> the Dingles Emmerdale. <laughs> the Allahans Coronation Street. <laughs> Loyal? Not to me. His wife. You've parked your backside in that pew, young lady. This is a funeral! Shut up, Nana. Oi, carry on and you will see the back end of a Bible. I'm so sorry, God. I mean, I was the love of his life. Surely I get to say my piece, no? <laughs> he abandoned me and he abandoned Bobby and no amount of last minute I love yous is going to change that. Not just do that. It's like the good old days with Pat and Peggy. There are a drink in my face! Oh, what? what on earth is going on? I, I admit I probably shouldn't have smeared potato salad in Chaz's face, but you know what? She had it coming. And let's be honest, this is nothing to do with living with me, is it? This is about you putting me in my place, making sure I know where I stand with the family. Well, now you do. Yeah, now I know. Cos everyone's here with me. Well, not quite everyone. Aaron, you couldn't get far enough away from you if you tried. Why don't you tell her the truth? About what? Tell her. You think she's been getting all the attention? <laughs> Is that a joke? I'm not blaming you for anything. Why not? Why is it never her fault? She's stripped off in the first place. Oh, we're still arguing over that. I mustn't upset Asha. No, whatever you do, we can't upset the princess. Whether it's her skin, her taking a kit off, her boyfriend's getting done for murder. How can you blame me for that? I'm not blaming you for anything. No, you're perfect. And the winner is... The Dingles Ender! Good evening. Um, it's great being a dingle. One minute you're breaking into like a solicitor's office, getting chased around by two of the campest security guards you've ever seen in your life, <laughs> saying, you are in so much trouble. And then the next minute you're doing up a shabby old caravan. You could be fighting, fornicating, fishing. But all the time, we know that everybody's watching and they just want us to get on well and look after each other. And that's what we do at the end of the day. That's what the Dingles do. So thank you so much to the viewers, because it's a viewer voted award, and we appreciate that so much, because we've, we've had the viewers. We haven't got a show without the viewers, let's face it. None of us. Um, I've got three things I want to say before I get off stage, because I don't want to keep you too long. First thing, we want to say hello to one of our honoured cast members, Lisa Riley, who plays Mandy Dingle, who's not here tonight, because she's got a, a family issue, she can't make it, so lots of love to Lisa. <laughs> Unfortunately, she can't make it. And secondly, I would like to um, use this award to commemorate the life of Mr Andy Devine, who <laughs> was on Emmerdale for 10 long years, played Shadrach Dingle, he was, an, he was an honoured and loved member of our cast and unfortunately died in January of this year and none of us knew about it until a couple of, couple of weeks ago. So we, we miss and love Andy so much, so 
This is, this is for him. And finally, I'm on my way out. Don't worry, I'm off. I'm off in a minute. But for 23 young, long years, Nottingham Forest have been in the championship. They've just got promoted. Duncan Foster's going to hate me for this, but you It's time now for this year's very special Tony Warren Award. Named in honour of the legendary Coronation Street creator, it acknowledges a major contribution to soap from somebody behind the scenes. Here to tell us about the recipient is someone who took Weatherfield by storm on screen with his unforgettable turn as the devious Pat Phelan. Give him a huge round of applause, <laughs> but keep your eye on your handbags. It's the incredible Connor McIntyre. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. This year's Tony Warren Award goes to the staggering talent behind some of the greatest Coronation Street moments of all time. She started life on the show as a storyliner back in 1991, shaping the lives of Raquel, Beck Gilroy, Ivy Brennan, the Duckworths, and many more. She soon became a scriptwriter crafting iconic scenes like Hayley Cropper's decision to end her own life, the death of Maxine Peacock, and the live 50th anniversary episode in 2010. She also created the notorious villain, Pat Phelan. <laughs> Characters like Pat don't come along very often, and I can honestly say that playing him was one of the great joys of my career. For that, I will be eternally grateful. The person I have to thank has kept us all gripped with her brilliant, compelling scripts, not just on Corrie, but on Emmerdale and Brookside too. In short, she is an absolute powerhouse. So it is my great, great honour to announce that the 2022 Tony Warren Award goes to the wonderful Jan McVerry. <laughs> on a soap is about the best job you could wish for. You get to work with amazing cast and be surrounded by the most creative, brilliant, twisted individuals on the writing team <laughs> and a brilliant team of script editors and storyliners that support us. So it's great for us. It's not always so great for our families who have holidays interrupted and sports days interrupted when we have to dash off and do rewrites. So I want to say to Nicky Mark, and Megan and Orla, thank you for dispensing welfare rights advice and delivering babies and working long, grueling hours in hospitality out in the real world when I was just at home writing about it. Um, I've got to thank my agent, Beth Ann Evans, who's absolutely brilliant. Um, when I started on Corrie all those years ago, um, there was one woman on the writing team and one other woman in the storyline office and they said to me, don't talk for the first three months. <laughs> so who says that to a scouser? <laughs> <laughs> I look around now. <laughs> and, and the soaps are absolutely streets ahead of other dramas in giving a voice to women writers. <laughs> and I, I think Tony Warren, who I was lucky enough to know and loved and was just the most amazing man and none of us would be here without him. I think someone who wrote so brilliantly for gutsy, opinionated women, he would really approve of that. And thank you, I'm so honoured to have my name connected with his. And I'm out of time, thank you. <laughs> well, 
Let's take a moment now to remember some much-loved soap favourites who are sadly no longer with us. Since we were last here back in 2019, we've said goodbye to some brilliant people who've had a huge impact on our soaps, both on and off screen. They are sorely missed, but they leave behind some truly wonderful memories. Oh, I could eat you on a butty without salt. I'm going to miss you so much. So you should. And they're replaceable. <laughs> Why don't we skip the cruise next time and head straight for Turkey? I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh, and uh, we could leave our son out at home. <laughs> Thirty years old, eh? Mm -hmm. I reckon that's aged almost as well as me. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's what made life worth living. I reckon Nestle had the right idea. Enjoy the time you got. It's over in the blink of an eye. It's no use worrying. Welcome back to the British Soap Awards, where there's another big one on the way now. It's Scene of the Year, celebrating some incredible moments from the show-stopping to the absolutely jaw-dropping. Winning this award takes real talent, so we've found the perfect person to tell us more. He's the brilliant comedian who won Britain's Got Talent just a week ago. Please welcome Axel Blake. <laughs> How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? You all right? Good to be here. Finally step out of the house. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> I've learned that's something you've got to say back, you know? Good to step away. <laughs> Get away from the missus. It feels good. It feels good. <laughs> I'm joking. She let me out. She let me out. <laughs> good behaviour. So cleaning the house means. Right, I digress. <laughs> so the nominations for scene, best scene of the year are Bridget Collapse Emmerdale. <laughs> Miss Bud Didn't Consent Hollyoaks. Yeah. Johnny's Death Coronation Street. <laughs> Hall of Mirrors EastEnders. Mad Hatter's Tea Party Doctors. You do know this should only be two on here. Huh. What's the worst that could happen? Oh! Ah! 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 
Batting consent, Holly Oaks! I didn't, so... But anyway, um, thank you. This means so much. And I've been on this show for five years, and I thank Holly Oaks, I thank Lucy, I thank Brian when I started the show, I thank the producers, everyone that works on this show, because you guys are the absolute best, and we're so lucky to work with our crew. But do you know what? I want to say thank you to this lady right here. And this is... She's my TV mom, and she's an inspiration and my role model. And honestly, my journey would not be where I am today without this lady right here. So thank you. Thank you so much to Alan, our writer, to Neil Wilkinson for your delicate direction. Neil, we love you. And thank you to our producers, to everyone on this show. And to our Malik's. <laughs> Next tonight, we have the award for best comedy performance. Those larger than life characters who know exactly how to tickle your funny bone in the midst of murder, mayhem, madness, and misery, they are always on hand to lighten the mood. And let's face it, these days, we need them more than ever. Here to present it are two people who've given us plenty of laughs lately. One is a BAFTA-winning actress and star of the hit BBC sitcom, The Other One. And the other one is usually seen getting up to no good with his father, Bradley, in the enormously entertainment, entertain, entertaining Breaking Dad. Please welcome Lauren Soccer and Barney Walsh. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having us. Hello. Uh, the nominations for Best Comedy Performance are... Jane Hazelgrove, <laughs> Coronation Street. <laughs> Sarah Moyle, Doctors. <laughs> Chelsea Healy, Holly Oates. <laughs> Tamika Empson, EastEnders. Lisa Riley, Emmerdale. Oh, Adi. Well, if I'd have known you were here, I'd have made you a brew. You're all right. We were going through the rotor for the kebab shop. I thought it was a wind-up. But your dad sorted it. I just said to him I don't know how he managed to squeeze it all in. <laughs> OK, I'll let him in, but maybe we should have a secret word in case it turns nasty. Is it likely to? I don't know. No. Not violent, anyway. Valerie? Squirrel. 
If I say the word squirrel, come get me. What was my mother's name? Mara? Maria? No. Right. Did your mum drink tea? The Kimfluencer! Yes! We're talking hair, makeup, nails. This room that's a lie. But let me sort out the mess that is here. I had a, a prom vindaloo from Takeaway Village on the ice street next to Chippy that gave me food poison a couple of times. Point is, I think they must have changed recipe because so. Uh, no word of a lie. It's, it's burnt the whole right through me. And the winner is... Tamika Empson, EastEnders! Collins, who gave me the character of Kim, and my journey through EastEnders, which has been phenomenal. I love everybody that has been involved in the making of Kim, playing alongside Kim, and just to say, I'm suffering from hay fever, so my eyes, <laughs> my eyes. Um, I, I really don't know what to say, Phil. No, I have to thank everybody, all the execs till now, Chris, Kate, um, everyone at EastEnders, the runners, the camera, the crew, everybody, my family, Rudolph, who's always been there, little Rudy, Diane, a sister in life as well as on screen. Um, look at Harry. <laughs> Look at Delroy. <laughs> coming up, coming up. Um, my daughter as well, Pearl. Um, I've got so many people to thank. I want to thank you all. There's so many. You know you ain't got enough time. But I can't leave the stage without thanking my family. Mum, Dad, my sisters, Keisha, Amelia, Colette. Uh, my children. Yes, I'm going to thank them because they keep me stern. Davian, Nyla, my husband, Fitz. God, <laughs> the panel, and the fans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, so for a quick break, don't go anywhere because on the way. Welcome back to the British Soap Awards. We are just a few minutes away from the most sought-after award of the night, Best Soap. <laughs> but first, it's another biggie voted for by you, and we can expect some real star quality because it's Best Leading Performer. Here to tell us who's won is a phenomenal actor who earned a BAFTA nomination for his role as Stephen Lawrence's father, Neville, in the superb ITV drama, Stephen. Please welcome the brilliant Hugh Corshi. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I, I must say, I was very pleased, I was honoured to have been asked to present this award because it gives me an opportunity to acclaim the soap actor. When I was uh, doing Holby, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I was, I was about to say when I was doing Holby, I made a point of going to see our colleagues at the other end of the studio in EastEnders, and I wanted to see how, how they, they, they went through. I watched in silent awe as those actors went through 18 or 19 pages of script. On Holby, we typically did eight or nine, sometimes fewer. Those guys worked really hard. They had to be word perfect because they edited online. The point I'm trying to make is that a soap actor has to be skilled, talented, and disciplined. And I hope that you all agree with me that soap actors deserve nothing but our admiration and respect. And the nominations for Best Leading Performer are Gillian Wright, Paige Sandu, Linda Henry, Sally Carmen. and Mark Charnock. You're jealous. I've got a lovely life and a wonderful new man. Mum, I'm not jealous. And apart from your beautiful kids, what have you got? Absolutely nothing. OK. I love you too, Marlon Dingo. And you're not going to do this alone, OK? Why, Tina? Stupid, stupid cow! <laughs> Always getting herself into trouble that I had to sort out. I was... I was a guy when I lived there. And I went into labour in a stolen car. I have failed him from the second he was born, so do not tell me that that little boy doesn't deserve a better life as far away from me as possible. Da, 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 do you mean a job that solemnly da, swear da, to teach them a lesson? Da, 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 I da, da, da. have your wedding. Make your vows. And... The winner is Paige Sandu. Nervous and grateful. <laughs> um, I didn't expect to win because all of the other nominees are amazing. So congratulations. Um, and I just want to thank Emmerdale. I love you guys. <laughs> um, Emmerdale is the kindest, warmest, loveliest place to work. So thank you to the cast, the crew, the producers, especially Jane, Kate, and Laura for giving me this opportunity. And um, I really want to thank my family. You guys are my favorite people in the world. And my partner, he is too. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. <laughs> So we reach the final award of the night, voted for by you, and this one is massive. Best British Soap. With so much at stake, we needed someone who was up to the huge task of presenting it, and we found the very person. It's 40 years since Dynasty first burst onto our screen, so please welcome the legendary Sable Colby herself.
It is the sensational Stephanie Beecham. <laughs> It's a great pleasure to be here at the British Soap Awards. It is a riot. <laughs> and it is a great honor to be opening the envelope to the biggest award of the night. The nominations for the best British soap are Coronation Street. <laughs> Doctors, EastEnders, Emmerdale, Hollyoaks. Good luck, everyone. And the winner is... Well done to the whole team. We managed to not go off air throughout the whole of the pandemic. So well done to everybody. It's an absolute honour and delight to get this award in Emmerdale's 50th year as well. So tune in later in the year when there will be more drama in the Dales. Well done to our whole team. This is for everybody back in, the, back in Yorkshire for the ADs. For everybody who worked so very, very hard on the show, we are delighted and honoured. Thank you all! <laughs> now we can go to the bar! Now we can go to the bar! That is amazing. It's incredible how we can get so many people onto one stage. They are a very, very, very happy group of people. That is it for another year. What a night. Congratulations to Emmerdale and all of tonight's nominees and winners. We're off to party like it's happy hour down at the Woolpack. We'll see you in 2023 from all of us here at the Hackney Empire. Good night. Well, next Saturday afternoon, there's live coverage of the Gallagher Premiership Rugby Final from 2.15 on ITV4. And tomorrow night here on ITV, all the build-up plus all the action from the biggest charity football match of the year. Soccer Aid for UNICEF is live from 6.30. Next tonight, is the ITV News.